much knew what was going to happen to me too before even before the Lord called me to preach. I didn't know where I'd be sent. I didn't know where I would go. And I didn't know where I would wind up at. But I did know that God was going to call me to preach even before he ever called me. Well, Jonah knew that God had something for him to do and he wasn't going to do it. But when God told him he wanted him to go to Nineveh and preach to that wicked city, Jonah decided in his heart, I'm not going. And so what he do, he went and bought tickets to Tarsus and he got on the ship. And, and this is what we just read about some of the things that happened there on the ship. Now, now, now that the skipper, that is the skipper of the ship, had got Jonah awake, he had to go in and wake him up. He was down in the bow of the ship, and, or down in the bottom of the ship, asleep. And, and the, the skipper of, of the vessel went down and woke him up. And, and the, the ship was going in every direction and everything. And, uh, and uh, the, the skipper couldn't, real, he, he couldn't realize why is it you can sleep when all this is going on. And Jonah, just in essence, Jonah told him, I know what's going on. I know what's happening. And so Jonah, it, it teaches us something in our life that, you know, we may, we may uh, question Jonah, as these men did, as to why he did what he did, but uh, you, got, you got to realize we learn a lot of things about how to accept things that come in our life. And Jonah had accepted the fact that he was the cause of that, that he, he was not going to go to, John, no, was not going to go to, Tar, to Nineveh. He decided all that and, and he was, Jonah was completely calm about it all. And I think, I think maybe if we look at this, it'll teach us that regardless of what happens, regardless of what comes in our life, regardless of what God has, has us to do, we, we, we should be very, I guess, very uh, pleased that God would use us and not, not get all upset because something didn't go our way. And, and uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't Jonah's way. You know, I preached a couple of weeks ago on consider our ways. And, um, and so knowing this, uh, Jonah knew what God had for him to do. And Jonah, God's way was not Jonah's way. Jonah, Jonah decided a long time ago he would never go to Nineveh. And Jonah decided a long time ago before this ever happened that he was not going to preach to the Gentiles. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah even told him, he says, I, I, I'm, I'm of the Lord, and I'm one of His. I'm one of His people, and uh, he 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 never did tell these people on the ship why he 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 didn't go. He never did tell them. He, he didn't tell them about the the whale. You know, somebody might say, "Well, did Jonah know?" I think Jonah knew about it. I think Jonah knew exactly what was going to happen, and he was very. He was very, what God had him to do, I think he was very happy about it as, as to what God would have him do. Now, it is very sad when we hear that Jonah, quit, Jonah was questioned about what he was doing on the ship. And Jonah is asked, what is thine occupation? What, what do you do for a living? Jonah asked, well, what is thine occupation? Another soul-turning statement, a burning statement, they said to the to prophet, O sleeper, arise, come up, uh, uh, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us. You know, they knew Jonah was a man of God. They, they knew that he was somebody 
and, and, and when somebody mentioned, if you read the whole story, you will find when the ship started uh, swaying and the, and, the, and the ocean got tempest, uh, tempest uh, what did they say? One of them said, well, there's a man down there asleep and, and he's a Jew. He's down there, he's down there asleep and so they come to the conclusion that already that Jonah was the cause of their problems. They already knew that and that's why they asked him. That's when he went down, when they went down to get him and he said, oh sleeper, arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us. Call upon God for us. We're, we're not godly people. We're, we're, we're not, we don't know, we don't know your God. But you call upon him that he'll have, that he'll, he'll be pleased with us and, and, and stop this. None of God's chosen should ever put themselves in a condition by sinning that they are ashamed of being one of God's children. Joseph had sinned, and in some instances, he was ashamed that he was one of God's children. He said, I am, but he was ashamed of it in some, in some ways. Jonah should not have put himself in a position that he had to be asked, what is thine occupation? What do you do? Jonah's connection to Jehovah God was one of great privilege. Anything God calls us to do is special and is glorious. You know, when somebody, somebody called me here recently to preach a funeral, and they said, we just want to know, if, said uh, she wanted to know if you, she told before she passed away that she wanted you to preach her funeral. And, and I told him, I said, well, I'm not in the best shape, but it's an honor. It's an honor to be asked. And I did go and preached a funeral and everything went well. But, but Jonah knew that it was an honor for God to want to send him to Nineveh. Just like it, it, it's an honor. When I sit here, the longer I stay in Georgia, the more I realize it, it was an honor for God to send me here. It was, it was honor, it was, it, was, it was an honor for that. Jonah testifies of his confession. He said, I am a Hebrew and fear the Lord, the God of heaven, in verse nine. I can imagine the soldiers thought then, why did you not call upon the Lord God? The reason he did this because he had sinned. Jonah, Jonah knew he had sinned, and he knew, he knew, Jonah knew before he ever did it what he was going to do. He knew that he had sinned. Unconfessed sin shuts the mouth to repentance. Jonah wasn't about it. Jonah thought for the very time until they cast him in the water that he still wasn't going to go to Nineveh. But also Jonah knew that God had him prepared for something for him to do. He knew that. Now, the way God did it may not be satisfactory to Jonah, but, uh, but God, had, God had set this in, in order. <clears throat> it was Solomon who said, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28 and verse 13. Yeah, you know... Yeah, we all sin, but there comes a time when we have to forsake that sin. We have to, and, and it's hard to do. It really is. It's hard. It's a hard thing to do to forsake your sin because there's a lot of things that people want to do that they uh, really want to do it. They really want to do it. I mean, I don't care what it is. You know, when you talk about blatant sin, I mean, you, when you steal something, that's blatant sin. When you do things uh, that, that's going to hurt other people, that's blatant sin. And Jonah had committed blatant sin, and he did not want to have to repent of it. But he finally did in the end. Another heart-wrenching question that they asked Jonah is, 
Why hast thou done this? In verse 10. Why did you do this thing? You knew what it's going to do. Why would they ask him that if, if, if Jonah didn't know what was going to happen? Why? He says, why hast thou done this? In verse 10. To this question, Jonah was speechless. Jonah never did answer him. He never did give him an answer to that question. It is easy to answer why we ran to God. But boy, I tell you, it's a difficult thing to answer why we ran away from God. Difficult thing. Oh, you can all, we can say it and we can testify all day long why, why we ran to God. Why we trust the Lord. Why we do what we do as far as why we go to church. It's easy for us to trust that. But let me tell you, it's hard to answer those questions when somebody says, why did you do what you did? You know, all you can do is be speechless like Jonah. You're just speechless. It's e as I said, it's easy to answer why we ran to God, but it's so it's, it's so trying to ask why we ran away from God. Another soul-wrenching question is, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? Now, can you imagine, let me ask you this. Can you imagine them asking Jonah what we should do to you? Jonah knew. Jonah knew all along. Those, those on the ship knew that he had fled from the Lord, for he told them that's what he done. And they want to know, why would you do this thing? Why, why did you do this thing? Just think about that next time you sin and you, you try to hide it. Why did you do it to start with? You know, I, I wouldn't dare ask anybody that. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't dare to ask one of you that because... And I'll tell you why. I wouldn't want to tell you why I sinned. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have to stand up and tell you why I sinned. You know, but that's a hard thing to do, I'm telling you. It's a hard thing to walk up here and stand up here and tell the church, well, I've sinned and I want to ask forgiveness. I know it's a hard thing to do because I've done it. It's a terribly hard thing to do. And, and Jonah knew that. Jonah told the men, he said, take up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake the great tempest is up on you. Verse 12. I know. It's, I, I know I'm the reason. I, I, I'm the reason this is. I'm the reason that this thing has come up on you. And Jonah knew the reason that the thing had come up on them was because he refused to do what God told him to do. If he'd have done, if, if he'd have done what God told him to do in the beginning, there'd be no whale. Think about that for a moment. There would be no whale. There, there would be no whale that would regurgitate a man upon a uh, upon the shore of a city. Jonah would have just got his stuff ready, and he'd have taken a trip, and he'd have gone on. To Nineveh, and he'd have preached to those people. But, and God had even given him the message. God told him, the, the message I want you to preach to those people is, I want you to warn them that in eight days, your city is going to be destroyed because you're a wicked people. Same way with Sodom. Lot was warned a long time before God ever destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot was a reason Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Joseph was, I mean, jo uh, Jonah was a reason this ship was about to go under. Now, what are you responsible for? Think about that for just a moment. What, what is it that you're responsible for? What are you responsible for today that you're not doing for God that you know you should do? What are you responsible? Are you responsible well, the church service is not going the way they go. When I was typing out uh, the, the, the thoughts there on Christ made a curse, 
and I hit some. I got down to the second, and I was typing, and all of a sudden, boom, everything just went blank. Everything went blank. The whole inside of the uh, that I use for the uh, church bulletin just went blank. You know, first thing I said, I bowed my head and I said, God, why did this thing happen to me? What have I done? Because it's a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work to go back and put those names back on there. And I'm going to do it, Lord willing. I'm going to do it because I know God did it for a reason. It's something I did or something I may have been thinking about at the very time he was doing it that God didn't like. Let me tell you, God can snatch things out from under you in a hurry. He can snatch things out from under you in a second. You better be careful. You know, Carrie, you better thank the Lord for blessing you for you finding that money. I got a whole bag of change out there in my car. I thought about taking it over out to Glenwood and, and dropping it down somewhere. She said, Brother Sam throws money out there and said, there it is. Well, I did the same thing, Brother Sam. I threw a quarter out here a while ago. And I said, she said, I don't, want, I don't like to find it like that. That's the way I like to get it. But at any rate, uh, Jonah had done something he shouldn't have done, and he knew that he was the reason that ship was about to go under. The Bible states to keep from casting a living soul into the sea. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to land. They wasn't about to cast Jonah into the sea. They, they rowed harder. They said, we, we can, we'll get it straightened out. We don't have to throw a man in the sea. We'll get it straightened out. And they, they cast, they, they cast, they rowed hard to bring it to land. Their effort avail nothing. The ship, the, the sea was so bad that there's only one thing they had to do and that's what God had already per, uh, purposed for them to do and that's to cast him over. Jonah told them, said, this is the only thing that's going to calm this ocean down for you to cast me over. Well, why is it not in the will of Jehovah God for them to take Jonah to the shore. Many times we go against the will of God thinking there's a better way of doing things. There's a better way than the way God does it than do, for doing things. How many times have we thought that? You know, we, we, we knew what we had to do, but we figured there's a better way to do it. Well, we'll lie about it. We'll commit more sin. We'll throw it under the roof, sweep it under the rug, and, we've, and we'll, we'll do more sin. We just keep stacking sin up on sin, sin up on sin, until eventually we have to come to the realization that there is something that I've done that's causing this thing to be brought up on me. Something I've done. Many times, we go against the will of God thinking there's a better way of doing things. God had already set up Jonah's punishment way before the world was created. He prepared Jonah. He prepared the storm. He prepared the whale. He prepared that Jonah will do his will and go to Nineveh and warn them of coming judgment. God already determined that. There's nothing, nothing else going to Nothing else going to do it until Jonah realizes. I don't know if Jonah was going to try to swim to Nineveh. Well, I, I don't know if he was looking for the sea to wash him up on the bank of Nineveh. But I, I do think that when the whale swallowed Jonah, Jonah knew that that was the will of God right there. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? He drove that whale, drove that whale right to, 
right to the shore of Nineveh. God did. God, God drove that whale right to the shores of Nineveh and he regurgitated and he spit out seaweed and everything else and this man come out, out of him. And Jonah knew where he was because the Bible says he took off running and it was a three-day journey from where he was to Nineveh and God made it in one day. I mean, Jonah made it in one day. That's how quick he wanted to get God's will done in his life. He'd already caused enough trouble. Do any of you think God has done anything any different today or God does anything any different today? Let me tell you a truth. He has not. He still does it today. The problem with us, we will not recognize that we're at fault. We'll not recognize that we're at fault. We won't, we won't recognize that. Oh, I, I, I didn't mean, I, I didn't do anything bad. I didn't do anything bad. I just, I just want, I think, I think as one man told me one time here, he says, I think everybody needs to get away for a while. I said, away from church? He said, away from everything. Well, that can be sin in itself. That can be sin in itself because I, I, I'm living proof you don't have to get away because I have failed to get away. I have people right now accuse me of saying how I've forsaken my family because I failed to want to get away. But let me, let, me, let me quote another verse to you. What God said. What Jesus said. So as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. What were they doing in the days of Noah? They were going to and fro. They were married. They were partying. They were doing everything. And God, what, what happened? God destroyed them with a flood. Oh, don't, don't tell me that God is not at work today doing the same thing today, that this is the reason we're having to suffer in some ways today. Our chastisement has already been planned. The outcome of it has already been planned. In the end, all of us will meet our maker. What will we say to the Lord Jesus Christ when he's, we stand at the judgment seat of Christ and he asks us, why did we do this thing? What are we going to say to him? You'll say, well, I haven't sinned. Well, you're one of the first people. I've heard, I've heard that said, well, I don't sin. Well, you're one of the most unusual people I know. Well, what are we going to say to the Lord when the Lord says, why did you do this thing? Did you know you lost this or that because you did what you did? Why did you do it? That's one time you're going to stand there speechless. You're not going to know what to tell the Lord. All we can say to the Lord is what Jonah said, cast me into the sea. I deserve hell. Cast me into it. Oh, I'm not going to do that, Lord. I'm not going to do that. I just want you to know how you just messed things up in your life because of what you did. The men on the ship took up Jonah in verse 15. The men on the ship took up Jonah and cast him into the sea and the sea eased the raging. These men didn't want to do that. The men, the men hated to do what they did. For Jonah had paid the fare from Joppa to Tarsus. The men hated to cast one of their paying customers overboard. 
But God had prepared a great fish to swallow him up. Thus Jonah went overboard. Jesus said, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. I gave you the only sign that God gives you today. I gave it to you. Men seek out a reason why things happen to them. He says, it's because he, he said, you've got to understand the only sign I'm going to give you is the sign of Jonas. I gave you that sign today. So you have, you have no reason not to realize that you may have coming punishment. You may have things coming in your life that you don't want to come. You may have things happen in your life. Let me tell you, folks, God will chastise you. He has me. I told Rhonda here sometime back, I'm, I'm never going to be any better. Because God, God took care of me when during that time. You'll say, well, God let you live. Yeah, but sometimes, Brother Sam, when I get short of breath, I kind of wish God had taken me. But he's not going to do that. I've given you the sign today, the only sign you're going to get today. I gave it to you, and that's Jonah. Don't be like Jonah and do what God would have you do. You can't tell me some of the things you've done that you shouldn't have done, that it was okay with God. How can you tell me that? When we know it wasn't okay with God. How can you tell me this thing? How can you tell me that I've done things that was okay with God when I know I shouldn't have done them, but it was okay with God? The Bible states... And here's what the Bible states, Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. Verse 16. We didn't even read that verse. The Bible says, Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. Verse 16. Because they saw what happened to Jonah. I hope and pray you see today what happened to Jonah. And you'll be careful about your life. This is a sign, from all, this is a sign for all to heed. Do as God wills to do. And don't do like Jonah. Don't do like Jonah. Don't run from God. What God would have you do, don't run from him. Don't think in your heart just because a family member said it's okay that it's okay. I've learned, I've learned in the ministry that if, if people want the true answer, they don't want to come to me. If they want to answer, they'll take, they go to a family member. Oh, yeah, they do. They go to a family member. Find out, what does that family member think about it? And that family member says, well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Ooh, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that. I don't see anything wrong with it, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. So-and-so said there wasn't nothing wrong with it. The only sign you're going to get is a sign of Jonas. And you've got that sign today. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will bless you. And we won't be dismissed. We got lunch over there ready. I'm sure it's going to be ready. It always is. And uh, I want you to go and enjoy it. I want you to realize that for right now, that's probably one of the cleanest places you can go. Because I personally sanitize it. Believe that. Brother Neil, would you dismiss us and thank the Lord for the food?